Hey everyone, so by uh, a great turn of events, I got my hands on an RH200 Mark I A Thermal from my friend Dustin at OPT. And anyways, I figured I would show you guys what this telescope is all about since there's almost nothing about it on YouTube or the internet that's easy to find. So this is a uh, Riccardi Honders telescope, 600 millimeter focal length, F3 super fast, and I wanted to take you along with the process of taking an image and kind of showing you why this is an interesting telescope and perhaps worth the money. Hey everyone. So in astrophotography, there's a really important number or metric with all telescopes that will tell you a lot about how they perform, and that's the F number. So what the F number is, is the, uh, the telescope's focal length divided by the telescope's aperture. And this gives you a number that tells you how fast the telescope is capable of collecting light. And that's super, super important to save time and to capture fainter objects. And this telescope here happens to have an F number of F3, where most, te uh, most telescopes have F numbers ranging between F6 to F12. So this is an absolute beast of a telescope, but with F3, there comes a lot of technical problems that become very challenging to deal with. But um, the upside is, you can capture images of space super fast. Uh, for example, compared to my refractor, this can capture images at a rate four times as fast. So this saves me a ton of time and let me get some images of space way quicker. So I'm gonna take you guys on a journey tonight. It's a full moon right now. Um, Orion is kind of setting, so we won't have a lot of time to image all the interesting nebula that are out. But with this, we don't need very much time at all because it's very fast. So anyways, yeah, come along with me and let's get some images of space. All right, guys, so what we gotta do now is get the, all, uh, get the telescope connected, get everything in focus, get it ready to roll, and then start rattling off some pictures after we decide what object we're actually gonna take pictures of tonight. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just disconnect everything from last night reconnect everything just so I'm sure we got a valid connection there you can see my roof from the other night and yeah we're just gonna get everything nice and set up here for capturing connect my camera get it cooled down and then we're gonna um, get our framing set up so after we have everything connected here. What we're gonna to need to do is figure out where this telescope is pointed in the sky. And that's relatively simple to do with this program. This is Sequence Generator Pro. This is what I use to automate my capturing. So to figure out where I am in the sky, I just simply have to click Solve and Sync. And this will take an image and plate solve it for me so I can know exactly where I'm pointed. I think I need a screw to be tightened or something because this is a little loosey-goosey. Anyways, doesn't matter, still plate solved. I'm not even tracking, hold up. That's important if you're using a mount. <laughs> it's gotta actually be tracking. All right, so there we have our framing. Now we get to pick what kind of target we wanna look at. So I'm just gonna look in the sky here. We're gonna look up and just kind of figure out what we have. Um, of course, it would make sense to hit something in Orion. <clears throat> It would make even more sense to go to the seagull, but I don't really feel like that. And I'm mostly interested in some other objects. So let's see where the California Nebula is. See, that's, that's not very good. So I think we're gonna be stuck looking somewhere in Orion tonight, but that's fine. We'll, uh, we'll get you guys a nice picture here regardless. You know, I've been taking pictures of the Horsehead Nebula a ton. I've probably taken like three or four this season, but what's one more to add? So let's go here to the Framing and Mosaic Wizard. We're going to type in Horsehead Nebula. And we're going to see if we, uh, we like how it looks. You can see here we're a little upside down. That's fine with me. 
And I think we'll want to centrally justify this nebula. So I'm okay with that framing. Let's create this sequence. Delete all my other sequences. I don't have a rotator, so we'll uncheck that. And now we got a new target. So I'm going to go ahead and save this sequence just so we have it. I'll save it as Barnard 33. And now we got to pick our exposure times. So since uh, the moon's out, we're going to be doing narrowband. Ooh, that's tough. I actually don't have an S2 filter. Ooh, I don't know how I'm going to capture this one, guys. You see, this is tough. It's O3, HA and O3. The problem with the horse head nebula is that it's really weak in O3, and you almost can't get any detail out of it in O3 at all. You know, so it may make a lot more sense for us to go to the Seagull Nebula. All right, so based on the amount of time on objects we have, I'm going to go for the Seagull Nebula tonight, and apparently that does not have a number there. It doesn't have a catalog. Okay, Seagull Nebula, IC2177, cool. So the Seagull, I think, is going to be our object of interest for tonight. We'll get the most time on that compared to any other objects. So let's grab the framing we want here and it looks like it frames up quite lovely in my focal length. So I like that framing. We're going to make this sequence like so. We got one new target and then we just got to pick our exposures and this is going to be really easy since I only have two narrowband filters. We're going to roll hydrogen and oxygen pretty straightforward and we're gonna go 240 seconds each and I'll shoot for 40 per filter tonight um, we can check how much time we have on these objects with the planning tools here so you can see we're at 20 degrees at what about midnight so that gives us 7 8 9 10 11 12 that gives us about five hours to make something happen so we'll go ahead and end that sequence around midnight tonight and we just have to hit resume sequence and let it roll and off the telescope goes to capture capture our juicy juicy details almost created a cable snag there good genius so what it's going to do now oh that's not good that's not good that was close. <laughs> I had a cable snag there. You don't you don't want to have a cable snag. The Paramount is supposed to have through the mount cabling, but in reality it doesn't have enough space for it, so um apologies for that. I think I cursed there for a second, but <laughs> anyways. Now we should get an image where it can actually figure out where it's pointed. Um, if you're wondering why I don't have to do any other setup, is because I already polar lined and everything, so I'm not worried about doing any of that. So there, the scope knows where it's pointed now, and is just going to check and make sure if that's correct. And if it's good enough, it's going to move on to doing auto focusing and turning on the auto guiding, and then it's going to start taking pictures. So you can see here it was 2,000 pixels off of what I wanted. It's just going to correct that, and. Um, Reslew over and then we should be hunky dory and it'll run autofocus and then we'll start to get our pictures So if you don't know about the Seagull Nebula, the Seagull Nebula is a emission nebula in the constellation Canis Major, I believe and um, It's a star forming region that shows up pretty nicely in uh, narrowband images So it's a popular target this time of year when um, some of the objects in Orion are setting So here we go auto guider is initializing I'm running a nightly build of PhD, and this is going to allow us to do multi-star guiding, where instead of taking the centroid of one star, we take the centroids of all stars and average out the problems of noise. Now it's going to set our filter, and here it goes autofocusing. I'm running an Optech Leo to control the autofocuser. It's a really nice stable setup for this scope, and it gives me um, space for the back focus. It's a very shallow focuser. So yeah, this is just going to run through and then we'll be on to getting pictures and um, 
I'll show you guys the first subs when they start to come in. Alrighty guys, we are coming up on our first exposure here. We are only 28 seconds out. And this is gonna be only the first of many exposures, but this one will show us the most. And this is my favorite part in astrophotography from a backyard is seeing the first hydrogen alpha picture come in because it's always so different. You can see so much nebula compared to anything else. and it, the whole nebula will just pop onto the screen, and this is the first time I see many objects in space, like, or this is the way I see many objects in space for the first time. So here we go. Just let this download, and we should have a pretty epic view. Any second, any second. There we go. All right, so there's the space object. Of course, the screen stretch function and sequence generator pro is straight up garbage with overscan regions, so it'll be kind of hard to see. All right, there we go. So there's the nebula. Pretty crazy, you can just see that from the backyard. Looks like we got some good signal going on here, especially on this very bright part. Anyways, this should make for a, uh, an interesting image. Now we just gotta let this run all night and then we'll be back in the morning to uh, finish prep on the image, take some flats, take some calibration frames, and then we'll dive straight into editing this. So fingers crossed, data capture goes well tonight. I'll be keeping my eye on it, but yeah, I'll see you guys in the morning. Alrighty guys, so apologies for the wind, but it's the morning after last night. It looks like we got enough data to actually make a picture. We got um, about 40 uh, hydrogen alpha frames and 20 or so oxygen three, a little less oxygen than I was hoping for, but hey, we'll, uh, we'll make it work. So next step is we're gonna go ahead and go inside and actually get to start editing this image. Um, I already took flats yesterday, so I'm not gonna bother doing that again because it's cold and windy, so. <laughs> See you guys inside. What's up guys? So all the data is in and we're going to go ahead and start editing it now. Normally I would blink through all the data and look at it, but every single subframe is like 60 megapixels and I'm going to be real with you guys. I don't have the RAM for that. I have 32 gigs, but it will still crash my PC. How do I know? Well, I already crashed my PC a second ago, so that's where we're at. Anyways. I'm loading up the um, batch pre-processing script here. I'm just loading in all my data. And I'm just going to let it chew through all this. I took flats the other day, and I've got a bias from earlier this summer, or last summer, so bias, master bias, master flats. We don't want to optimize our darks. That's going to mess everything up. And everything's probably good. My integration parameters probably good enough. And yeah, we are just going to just grab a random subframe. Hopefully that one's good. We'll see if it's not. <laughs> and yeah, give it an output directory. And I have no darks because um, I don't want to take my telescope off the mount. So yeah, we're doing no darks. It shouldn't make that much of a difference on this sensor. It's really clean and we're cooled. All right, so let's run this. And we'll come back when she's all stacked up. All right, so I got my data all stacked up now. So we have the hydrogen alpha and the O3, and as you can tell, there is barely any O3 in this nebula, and I knew that would be the case, but we're gonna try to deal with that during the processing. Uh, in the interest of this video not being 25 minutes long, I'm going to speed through most of the processing, and I'm sorry, I know a lot of you guys would like to see that and more slowed down detail, and we will get to that eventually. Um, I just kind of wanted to show the capture or the process of capturing the image and not focus too heavy on image processing because that would be very heavy. So before you guys comment, slow down the processing. Don't worry, it's it's gonna come eventually. Um, so yeah, sit back, relax, and enjoy this um, editing time lapse. 